Hey guys, it's Jessica from Peace Love Books, and today I'm here with a video chatting about all the books that you're currently obsessed with. I've done this video quite a few times throughout the years on my channel. I love doing it because I just get to see what everybody's reading and loving and remind me what I have to read because I usually haven't read a lot of them. I usually own a lot of them, but I haven't read a lot of them. Also, I am fighting a cold. I just got back from a 10-day trip to Europe and my sister got sick halfway through with this cold and we shared a room. And so now I have it that I'm home and that is like the least ideal situation because I have so much to do coming back home, but we're going to push through because then I have to film this and then mow the lawn while dripping snot, but you know what? It's fine. It is okay. I'm here to chat about the books that you're currently just absolutely obsessed with. I asked on my Instagram. I got quite a few recommendations, so we will go ahead and get started. The first one I have seen a couple times, and that is The X Vows by Jessica Joyce. I'm so excited for this. I did read You With A View, which I think was her first book, like, ever, and it was good. It was a solid read. I wasn't obsessed with it like other people were, but The X Vows is a second chance romance at a wedding. So this is high on my TBR. I do own this. I really want to read it. I'm so excited that you loved it. I also have Vibe by Liza James. I do own this and I've owned it for quite some time and I still have not gotten to, around to reading it yet, but it is a dark sapphic romance. So think like Tristix Venom by Penelope Douglas or Serpentine Valentine by Gianna Darling in those kind of vibes and I gave both of those five stars. So I really want to read vibe by Liza James and this is Kelly who had recommended it from Kelly Reynolds Reads and Kelly loves sapphic romance. It's sapphic September. I need to read more sapphic romances this month. So yes, on my TBR. Yeah, next one is by Melanie Moreland and I feel like I've heard of the, her books before but not this specific book. So we have Aldo and... Roman by Melanie Moreland and Aldo actually has a 4.15 average rating and from the cover I'm assuming it's a mafia romance and it says my best friend is the king of the Niagara Falls underworld <laughs> so okay so he's like the right hand man to the king I thought it was gonna be like MM for a second but it's not so he is the right hand man to the enforcer whatever and she walks into his life alluring he can't stay away and it's their romance so it is a mafia romance but you know what i am in the mood for mafia speaking of mafia we have his to sorrow by emilia rossi this one i have my eye on because i saw tori read it from live the novel life and the heroine has a condition where she does use a wheelchair sometimes and the character art for this book is what caught my eye all i know is that she uses a wheelchair and he's in the mafia and I think that has really great representation and the art is so stunning and I highly recommend checking out the author's Instagram if you want to check it out but I for sure want to read this yes then we have Wild Eyes by Elsie Silver I love this I just posted my picture today on Instagram about this book and it's a single dad romance she's a country star she has not had the greatest life and she's like nobody really cares about me so she goes to uh, wild Rose Records, I believe, which is the record company for the first book, and uh, it is the, so it's the hero from the first book's one who has a record company. He married Rosie, and it's Rosie's brother who is the hero of book two, and they're all single dad romances. He has two kids. He's divorced. So, so freaking good. This series is amazing. I agree. I am obsessed as well. Then we have the In Death series, so I really want to actually reread this series. Well, okay, reread book one. I only got one book in. It's Even Rourke, and it is J.D. Robb, which is Nora Roberts. It is like 50 books long though, and like, do I have time for that? No. But I would love to read the Endeth series. They said that the new book came out at the beginning of the month, and that's what they're obsessed with, so I definitely want to read that. Then we have Six Scorched Roses by Carissa Broadbent, which is a fantasy romance. It's all I know. I do know that she wrote Serpent of the Wings at Night, which is more popular than this book, and I don't know the reviews of this one. I feel like I've heard mixed things, but that could be about a different book by her. I feel like there's one series that people pretty much do not love by her, and then people love the Serpent of the Wings at Night series, and then I don't know if this one watch this one this was is but if you're loving it super happy then we have penance by eliza clark they said this is super perfect for fall and spooky season so that has me very intrigued i have never heard of this before or seen this cover is this a thriller it's been nearly a decade since the murder of 16 year old joan rocked crow on sea and they're being published for the first time oh wait is this nonfiction? I think this is f nonfiction. <laughs> Very interesting. Well, it says fiction. Why does it sound like it's like true crime? 
Is it? What is this? Built on hours of interviews with witnesses and family members, historical research, and correspondence with the killers themselves. Let me, let me know. If you've read this, let me know. I'm very confused. None of the reviews are telling me what it is, but interesting. My nose gets redder and redder. Just ignore it. Honey Trap by Tate James. 100% yes. I don't even think I finished this series though, but it's so good. It is MFM and they're assassins like sent to kill each other. It is so good. I love it. Then we have Maybe in Another Life by Taylor Jenkins Reid. I got rid of most of my Taylor Jenkins Reid's books that I had because I didn't think I would read them. Her titles are very similar, so I don't remember if I read this one. I read One True Loves. I don't think I read this one. This one might be the one where she had seen like two different lives that she could have. It's like, what if she leaves? What if she saves? It's like a parallel universe kind of story. So then we have Alone With You by Ali Martinez, which I have read a few by her and I think I liked them, but she's usually not an author super on my radar. Oh, this is her new one. Okay. I do remember seeing this. I do like the cover. Wow. This is actually a really, really good reviews. So it sounds like he never leaves his home, but he has a daughter and once a week he forces himself to walk to the diner at the end of the block and there's a close sign one day and he's like, what am I going to do? And then the new owner is Gwendolyn Pierce who hates him. And oh, a new film crew arrives to dig into his past and she becomes his only ally. Oh my gosh, this sounds so good. I think it's going to be really sad, but it looks really good. It has a 4.5 average. Ali Martinez is someone who I know writes really like angsty emotional romances. So very intrigued. Then we have, sorry, my nose is really running, <laughs> Fear the Flames, which just re-released. Someone said that it just came out on audio and I hope to obsess over that one. It did publish and I don't know if there's gonna be like huge differences between republishing. I do have the indie copy, but it just came out republished with a publisher. And all I know is that there's dragons in here and that it's fantasy. So... Then we have Bride by Ellie Hazelwood, which I have to read. I do think I'm going to love this one. It is a werewolf romance. I think it's Marriage of Convenience too, so for sure on my radar. And then we have Play Along by Liz Tom Forty, which also is on my radar. I haven't read it yet. It is a basketball romance. I've seen everybody obsessed with it. I don't know a single person who dislikes Liz Tom Forty's books. Like, they are just, like, quintessentially the prime romance what people love and I've read three of them and I loved all of them they're just like kick your feet make you giddy romances she just knows how to write a romance and so I for sure want to read play along haven't read it yet oh okay so the bonus by T.L. Swan I honestly didn't know T.L. Swan had a new book out and this is she's just been killing it and I don't read a lot of her books I read one that I really liked that's like her most popular one but I don't know if her like style of romance is for me because I don't know is it more rom-commy I don't know but it, this one says that she has the perfect job perfect pay but she's in love with her boss and Gabriel is tall and handsome but then he opens his mouth and he's bossy and sarcastic, wit so sharp, and she counts down the days until she can see him again, and she decides to quit, and he gets mad. I'm glad you loved it. It's definitely, I've seen it in the top on the charts, so people are really loving it. Then we have If This Is Love by Julie Ann. Julie Ann also writes really good emotional angsty romances. She did recently write a rom-com that I was like, I'm, I'm not a rom-com reader, so I was not interested in that. So now I don't know what she's currently writing, but If This Is Love is a cowboy romance. And when the only person that loves her dies, Milo's there. Um, and then as she gets older, she doesn't see him as a big brother anymore. And she imagines a future with him. Oh, he's marrying the woman she hates. So that sounds like it's going to be... <laughs> really good. Oh, Christy gave it five stars. I guess this came out a year ago. Um, that sounds like the angst I love, so I will be checking it out. Then we have Blood of Hercules by Jasmine Mass. I'm so excited. I actually started this and got 10% in, and then I had to stop to read some arcs that I have, but this one is a Hercules retelling. I believe it's gonna be why choose. In just the beginning, the heroine is growing up as, like, an orphan, and she's, like, adopted, and horrible people, and there's an interesting, like, magic system happening. She's friends with, like, this ghost snake and only she can see it and then they adopt another boy and it's that's where the story goes like I haven't gotten to when she's like grown up yet and I'm 10% in but very excited for that one I've just heard amazing things so I want to continue that and then Bourbon and Lies by Victoria Wilder again I've heard amazing things about this this is on my September TBR actually it's a romantic suspense and I really want to read it like this one yes please yes 
And we have the Canary Cowards, which I actually don't even know what this is about. I know this is Jesse Hall, and I know that I'm reading my first Jesse Hall this month because it is my Ravish by Romance pick. But is this football? It does have a football on the cover. So she is a physiotherapist, and she falls for a client, and he is a fallen football star. Is this like not a dark romance? Interesting. I thought that she only wrote like really dark romances, but this seems to be like a contemporary football romance. Interesting. We have another play along and the X Vows, so I have to put both of those at the top of my TBR. Wild Eyes by Elsie again, and then Beating Heart by Laura Pavlov. Love this as well. This one is a single dad romance as well, and the series is just amazing. It's neighbors romance. She's a doctor. I love it. The Dixon Rule, which I think I gave five stars. This is L. Kennedy. This one, oh my gosh, this came out a while ago. I wonder when book three is coming out because I think it was confirmed that it is MFM, which is going to be really good. But this one is a neighbor's romance as well. And it's college, hockey, so good. Not in Love by Allie Hazelwood. I've heard really, really mixed things about this, but people did tell me I would like it because it is angsty. So if you call the book angsty and you read it and specifically think I'm gonna like it, I'm gonna move it up on my TBR. So I do think I got this in on audio, but I really want to read it. Then we have Passenger Princess by Morgan Elizabeth, which I have seen a lot of people talking about, and it is a bodyguard romance. And it's all like pinks and it looks so good. Obviously, it is so high on my TBR. And then A Daughter of Fair Verona by Christina Dodd. I don't know if this is her newest book. Christina Dodd used to write like different um, paranormal romances and this one is a kind of retelling of Romeo and Juliet if they didn't die. So it is a historical mystery, which just, this seems like very out of my element because I think it's during the time period of Romeo and Juliet too. And so I don't know if I would like it. It definitely sounds interesting, but I don't know. I don't know. It's kind of, I kind of hesitate because I'm like, it's just very out of my wheelhouse. So then we have Akatar. How did it take me so long to read this? That is a question. And another Akatar. I love that people are still discovering the series though. Then we have Tangled Wires by Lillian Lark. I don't know what this is. Tangled Wires. It is a machine romance. Or is it like not an actual machine romance? Is it like, is that a metaphor? Like he acts like a machine? So Rachel is the one who recommended this from Rachel Reads and Sings and she says that it's a sci-fi Black Mirror vibes. Ooh, angsty, emotional, and hot. Have me intrigued, Rachel. Then we do have Wisteria by Adeline Grace, which I definitely have to read. That is book three in the Belladonna series, fantasy again. And then we have Not Another Love Song, which I obviously have to read. Forget Me Not was one of my favorite books of the year last year, so I have to read Julie Soto's new one. It's a musician romance. It's everything I'm gonna love. I have to read it. Two people said Lost Boys by Jesse Walker in a row. So Lost Boys, Jesse. Okay, so this I know Lizelle has been like yelling at me to read, and I know, I know. I think that this is MM, and it just says it's a full-length, slow-burn, emotional MM romance, and it's a duet, I think. So, it is high on my TBR. I promise you it is. This is like pushing me to read it more. Forget Me Not by Julie Soto. One of my absolute favorites. I love this so much. Second Chance. They both are in the wedding industry. They have to work on a wedding together. So, so good. Okay, and then the last one I have is Between Never and Forever by Britt Benson, which I feel like you guys are, like, in your angsty romance eras right now because everybody's been recommending angsty romances. I think that that previous one, The Lost Boys, is angsty. I think Between Never and Forever is actually super angsty as well. So this one, it says she was the first rule I ever broke. She'll be the last. An angsty and spicy standalone romance, rock star, single father, small town, second chance. I think I would love this. It has been on my radar. Britt Benson's definitely been on my radar, but I've never read anything by her, I think. But this is definitely the series I would start with. So I love that we're all loving the angst. If you have any other angsty romances you've been absolutely loving, let me know. I need to hurt. It is my favorite thing ever but those are your favorite romances that you're obsessed with right now and I have not read like 90% of them but guess what probably 80% of them are already on my TBR so I will be trying to get to these you guys have the best reading taste let me know if there are any other romances that you're obsessed with that I haven't talked about I would love to hear and if you have made it this far leave me a grape emoji for the x-files because I'm pretty sure there's like grapes on the cover and I think most people talked about that book so leave me some grapes and that's all I have as always thank you so much for watching and have a good day bye